someone named Fran Youngstein who was running for mayor of New York. She didn't win, but at least it was one of the early stages of the beginnings of the Libertarian Party. I want to tell you all today that basically I'm here to tell you there's some, I have some good news for you and some bad news. The bad news is that America and the world are facing very serious problems. In the next two or three years, we're going to see huge dislocations in the financial markets all over the world and the economies all over the world, and many people are going to suffer and go bankrupt. Now, you may wonder why that's good news, uh, and it can lead to good news. And the main reason is because when the world has turmoil, people look for new solutions, new answers, and the right answers. In 1856, in America, there was an election, and the world knew, at least subconsciously, that America was facing serious problems, and in that election in 1856, two sitting or recent American presidents lost and could not, one could not even get the nomination of his own party, even though he was a sitting president. The reason I had one major political party, the Whigs disappeared, completely disappeared, and another new party came to the fore, a new party which people thought had answers. So that's what we're facing here in America in 2016. The American public knows something's wrong. You read the same newspapers I do, you see the same TV I do. You know, we have one presidential candidate who is disliked by 60% of the American people, and the other one is disliked by 7% of the American people. So you can see that something is clearly very, very wrong in America. We have with the largest debtor nation in the history of the world, with the largest debtor nation in the history of the world, the debts are going higher and higher. We have troops stationed in over 125 countries around the world. They're not doing anything except making enemies for more and more people. Our education system is among, well, once upon a time it was the best in the world, but now our kids do not even finish in the top 20 when we have international examinations. Our health care, we spend more on health care than everybody else by a great measure, and yet our life expectancy is not even in the top 20 worldwide. We're spending staggering amounts of money and getting nothing for it, whether it's military, education, health care, you name it. So the whole thing is falling apart now, and most of us know it, and we're going to find out when these economic problems hit us, and everybody's going to be desperate for, for new answers. Some of you probably know, since it's a Memorial Day weekend, American Airlines alone has had 70,000 people miss flights in the last year because of TSA. So no matter which facet of American life you're involved with, you know it's not working, but everybody knows it. And the crisis, in 1856, the crisis was about free trade, immigration and slavery. Well, we have similar crises now. The main crisis now is the gigantic debt, which is taking place in America. It's getting higher and higher. Nobody in Washington seems to know or care about it. So the American public knows something's wrong. We all know something's wrong. Everybody in this room knows something's wrong. We have with us philosophically and intellectually the best solution the problem is we haven't really been able to persuade other people of that yet. That after this election, people are going to be dead. And, and we may win this election, but in case we don't win this election, the American public are going to be desperate for new answers. And the new answers are going to be, I assure you, it's not going to come from the Greens. I assure you, they're not going to come from some old and worn, tired, worn out names we all know. They're going to come from us. Uh, because we, the world and America, especially America, needs a very serious and deep cleansing and a deep and serious revolution. I don't know how you all got into the libertarian movement. I know how I did, because I suddenly realized these guys have it right. But the American public is going to realize we have it right too. If you sit down and speak with most Americans and you explain to them, what if we did this, or we did this, or we did this, most Americans would say, wow, that sounds great. Why don't we have that? And then you can say, well, we do. 
It's called Libertarians. I've never heard of them. Or if they have, they don't know much about it. And then you say, well, you can vote. But they say, but I, my grandmother and mother and father have always voted Democrat or Republican, so that's what I do as well. But that's going to change when you hit them over the head with financial collapse and economic collapse. They're going to look for change just as they did after the, at the 1856 election and the one after. So I would commend all of you to read up on 1856 and the, and the disaster which happened in 1856 and in the years after and what it led to. It led to dramatic change in the American political scene. As I said, one of the major political parties that have been around since the beginning of the Republic disappeared. And another one which had never run before, and in fact in 1856 they ran a candidate who had never run for political office in his life. But you can, in 1960, they won. So you can see the kind of situation we're in and what's going to be happening to us. And all of you are at the right place at the right time. I hope we're all at the right place at the right time. Those of us who survive the coming nightmare are going to be certainly looked around, people are going to be asking us what to do, and we have the answers, and I hope we can all pull it off. So I think on that happy note, I should stop. Uh, a couple of you asked, as I said, can you ask questions? I'm not sure we even have a facility for asking questions. Yes. But if somebody does want to ask a question. So we're going to, there we go. Okay, here, here's a question right here. Daniel? Oh, Does anybody have any questions, Mr. Rogers? Here, Daniel. Mr. Rogers, um, I've been paying attention to you for a long time, over a decade. And the biggest thing that you, you've always benefited from taking advantage of economic opportunities overseas from what a lot of people didn't see was going to be a booming market. You know, of course, you talk a lot about China. I would think that, you know, is China still a good, whenever they're talking about mayhem and war and economic catastrophe, a lot of times that's a place to go and then build on up. There are other things in Asia that you're talking about. I wanted to get your opinion on Cuba. Well, Cuba is a, is a place of great opportunity for the Cubans now and for other people. The problem is, you know, we who live in the land of the free are not so free. We have not been allowed to do anything in Cuba. If, uh, other people have, the Canadians, the Europeans, the Mexicans, the Spanish, everybody else is already in Cuba. So when we show up to do something, they're going to be standing on the beach ready to sell us whatever we want to buy and inflated prices because we have not been able to trade or do anything to even visit there in many cases. So yeah, trade Cuba is a great place. My main hesitation, other than what I just told you, is the fact that Cuba only has 10 million people. Now, that's wonderful. It's a great place if you want a beach house, but 10 million people is not a, a huge market. You can contrast it with China, which has a billion, 300 million people. So there are better opportunities in other places like Vietnam, other countries. Um, regarding some claims that the U.S. might be able to restructure its debt, um, I mean, yeah, people don't realize, though, uh, that in order to be, nobody's going to lend you any money at that point, that you'd have to balance the budget. Could you talk a minute about how tight, how hard they would have to cut the budget, why that's impractical, and your thoughts on whether restructuring is still might be possible as far as washing away some of the debt compared to the option of Donald Trump, to my astonishment, said he's going to restructure the debt. I mean, I'm not sure the debt owners are going to be very happy. America is the largest debtor nation in the world. And if you go to them and say you have to take a haircut, we're not going to give you back your 100 cents on the dollar. Most of them are going to say, what the hell with you? I don't want to do anything with your economy, your country, or your credit rating. Uh, it cannot be done short of disaster. Catastrophe, whenever there's a catastrophe, you can certainly restructure debt. It's a normal thing to do. But to get from here to catastrophe is not going to be a lot of fun. Yeah, if it's a catastrophe and American government debt is selling at 75 cents on the dollar, sure. 
But none of us want to live through that period because many of us will suffer and go bankrupt in that period of time. The other, the other alternative which you mentioned, balancing the budget, not going to happen if somebody ran on a, a campaign of balancing the budget and America said yes and he were elected and he started balancing the budget after six months or so, people would say, wait a minute, this is too much pain. I didn't know it was going to be this bad. And he would either be assassinated or would have to resign or change his policy. But that leads to one policy, which is what's going to happen, is they're going to print a lot of money. The currency is going to become less and less valuable, and America is going to go from being the most successful and powerful country in the world, which it was in the 50s and 60s, to an also red, like the UK or Spain or some of the other, France or some of the other countries, which have been on top of the world at one time. And they got in too much debt. They got overextended militarily, economically, politically, philosophically, and they went into decline. So I don't particularly like saying any of that. I'm an American citizen like everybody in the room. My children are American citizens. We're all taxpayers and voters. But one has to face reality and to repeat myself. It's horrible news. It's horrible news what's facing us. But it's going to be such bad news, it's going to be great news for the Libertarian Party because then finally people will realize, hey, maybe they're nut nuts after all. Maybe they know what they're talking about. And we do. And we do. It's just a, the problem is we haven't been able to explain or to get enough people to listen yet. Our day will come. Mr. Rogers, this is going to be the last question. Okay. Uh, Jim, it, it appears to me that the world is on the edge of a pension crisis the world has never known. Uh, I have no idea how any of the pension mechanisms that are in place today can even meet the obligations that are out there, especially with negative interest rates in, I think, one-third of the sovereign debt. Um, any commentary specifically about No, that's, ex that's extremely insightful, and I'm afraid most people in the world don't know it. They're going to find out soon enough the next two or three years when this crisis is talking about. Uh, most of them, most well, anybody who's got a pension or thinks he has, especially if it's from the state or government, is going to find out something is very, very seriously wrong. <laughs> One of the things that Washington will probably do is when the crisis hits, they will confiscate the 401ks and the other pension plans which exist, and they will say, I know you, you've not been successful with your pension investing, we're going, to, we're going to save you. We will give you government bonds, 30-year government bonds. We will pay you 2% interest uh, so you don't have to worry anymore. But we're going to take your pension. In the 30s, they took the gold. This gold was very important. It was a source of money then. And this time around, they're going to take the pensions to save us all, and which will bail them out for a little while. But listen, the situation is much more dire than that. And everybody to forward to living on their pension or is living on the pension now is going to take a big haircut. I want to repeat, this is not going to be fun. This is going to be a catastrophe. But that's the bad news. The good news is that the Chinese have a word, which you may know, it's called a weiji. Weiji yu ban to be exact. We don't have the word in English, but the word in Chinese is the means catastrophe and opportunity are the same thing. Whenever there's catastrophe, there's opportunity, they go together, hand in hand. Forest fires are horrible, but they lead to great opportunities, etc., etc. So we're about to have waging you on. So you should be you should be worried, you should be knowledgeable, and you should be prepared. Because it's not gonna be fun, but it's gonna be good for us, because they'll finally listen. So all of you think about waging you on. Crisis and opportunity. Thank you. Thank you.